Hello, my dear friends. Just wanted to update you before the podcast gets rolling. We talk about the Shiguamagon 40. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Kyan actually participated in that and competed against some of the best in the country. He did very well. It was a mud fest. If you want to see the results of that race, go to that website, look that race up, and you will be able to see the results. Now let's dive in. Welcome to Unpacking the Athlete Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Rob Martin. Welcome to Unpacking the Athlete, a podcast dedicated to diving deep into what makes athletes who they are. Today's guest is a young mountain biker that has been traveling around the world racing. Here is a list of his recent accomplishments. He placed first in the juniors race at Iceman in 2019. He placed 10th in Missoula UCI race in 2021. He placed 5th in Missoula this year and also was 4th at the USA Mountain Bike National Championships this year. He has also taken some wins in the Michigan mountain bike scene. Our guest today is Kyan Olshelvi, who resides in Michigan. Welcome, Kyan. Let's dive in. Sweet. Thanks. Glad to be here. First question is a little off the wall, like always. So this is one that you probably didn't get a chance to look at because I just make them up. If you had to be great at a sport other than bikes, and these were your only options, which would you choose and why? Golf, billiards, which I call pool, or bowling? I'd have to go with golf because... I mean, a lot of money in that. I could buy as many bikes as I could ever want. <laughs> so still thinking about bikes, even, even with the choice of golf. Okay. Before we get into some questions on particular races, can you explain what team you're riding for right now? This year, I'm riding for the Bear National team. They're the, it's the top U23 team in the United States and sponsored by Trek. Cool. Can you walk us through the Missoula race this year and tell us a little bit about it first? So tell us what that is, because I'm sure there's some people that don't know what that is. Basically, it's it's a race in the um, UCI circuit in the United States in Missoula, Montana. It's at an abandoned ski resort. So just an amazing, amazing course. By far my favorite this year, for sure. It's literally straight up a mountain, so... There's no like short and punchy climbs. You're you're climbing for a good 18 minutes to the top, and that's at like race pace. So really good for me. I'm a climber, especially on the Super Cal too. Like it's just the perfect setup for that race. And then uh, once you get to the top, they'll send you down a black diamond downhill trail, big jumps at the start, and then just slowly turns into like more like techy tight turns, single track all the way down and it's it's a good five or six minutes of descending so you got to be good at both to really do well in this race which is partially in 2021 why i didn't i, I was kind of i could have done better i had i was getting dropped on the downhills because you know i grew up racing on sandy two tracks so that's all i knew it's a lot of fun so basically you go up and then you come straight back down and then obviously there you're doing laps right yeah, it was, I think it was four laps and it was like, I think 4,700 feet of climbing. So, I mean, it was, the mountain was straight up and all the turns were blind too. Like you couldn't go into the course, just not having pre-ridden it. Cause I mean, you'll come into some corners with so much speed. Basically, if, if you, uh, if, if you don't break, like you're going straight off the mountain. So it's, oh. it's, it's pretty sketchy, but it's, yeah, you gotta make sure you pre-ride it. Now, can you take us to the race this year? Tell us how it started and then maybe some talking points during the race, maybe some moves that you made, and then obviously how it finished off. I started out, I mean, like any normal UCI race, just 
balls to the wall, like literally as fast as you can possibly go. And uh, it starts on an uphill, which is also just also, I mean, you're just pushing a crazy amount of watts. So everyone's trying to get to the front, but it wasn't a huge deal in this race because we, we do have like a pretty good amount of passing room throughout the whole thing just because we're going slow, we're going uphill, and it's usually on the uphill is for the most part a lot of two track mixed in. So wasn't as big a deal. I, I'd say I did had an like okay start for me. Wasn't good, wasn't bad. And then I, I kind of just within the first couple minutes was able to make my way like behind the front group and kind of you know, latch onto their wheels for the first first lap until the downhill. So basically just a big climb at the start. And I made my way into, I think, seventh or eighth place and just kind of held that for a while. And then just staying consistent was like really, really big for me. Um, especially on like such a long hill, you can't like blow yourself up. Just keeping the watts consistent, but like really firm. And, you know, and like it's hard when there's somebody like 10 feet in front of you and like they're right there and you want to like just push yourself to get past them. But it's like it's not worth burning that match when you could like slowly make it out over the course of the whole 18 minutes or however long. I think, yeah, I think it was 18 minutes to the top. So, the biggest thing in like UCI racing is just, I mean, in Michigan, you can really just black out and, you know, just push the watts and get to the finish. But like, you have to stay focused, which is like a really big thing or else, you know, you can't descend well, you know, get dropped there. Just staying focused on the downhill was really big and, you know, trusting your instincts too. I'd done a good amount of pre-ride laps and I'd done it the year before so I knew the course pretty well and I was able to just you know let myself go and kind of flow down it uh, by the end I'd, I'd made up spots just like gradually and uh, made it to fourth place at the top of the mountain and I made I made a really big pass I'd worked really hard to catch uh, I think it was it was one of the Beard brothers Austin and Carson I forget which one it was but uh, they're just absolutely insane on the downhills like further ahead than anyone else in the u.s in my opinion and right into the single track like there was a not quite a 180 degree turn but almost into the drop into the downhill trail and i made the pass right before that i'd gotten into it and my shoulder hit a tree and he literally like jumped and just flew past me made the craziest pass i've ever seen and oh. It was amazing. And then just after that, didn't see him. He just flew down the downhill and actually caught the next person who is pretty far ahead on that like six minute downhill. He like actually caught up to him. And this guy's a really good descender too. So it was it was pretty cool to see. And was that kind of the finish then? Yeah, I mean I, I finished out in fifth and I think it was Austin or Carson Beard. I don't know. I forget which one, uh, but he finished in third. And yeah, Riley Amos, best in the U.S., finished first. That's yeah. really cool, man. So I got a question about the jumps. When you said you there was a downhill section, are you riding around those jumps or are you jumping the jumps? No, you're you jumping. Have to? What's that? I guess you don't have to. Like, they're in a UCI race, like cross country, especially, like, they're not going to put a gap. And if, if it is a gap, it's pretty low consequence, and there will be a ride around. These jumps were, there were doubles, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call them gap jumps, but they were, I mean, you definitely don't want to case them. And then they're, they're pretty big, but uh, they're a lot of fun. I mean, nothing that Super Cal can't handle, so. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a Black Diamond downhill trail, so, I mean, you can, uh, you can imagine they were pretty yeah. big. So you definitely hit those. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That's a good experience uh, yeah. and an improvement from the year before. So you're, you're in the right direction, man. <laughs> Thank you. Can you describe Nats this year, just the race? Because I think most people at this point kind of know what the course is. Yeah. And maybe So maybe just describe your race and how that went. Nats were pretty, I mean, of course, the start's always just 
absolutely terrible in the sun and in the dry, just kept going up that hill for a couple minutes. There's always somebody off the front who just completely just, I mean, goes way too hard. At elevation, once you hit like your peak heart rate, it's just going to stay there and you can't <laughs> recover unless you stop and like go really, really easy. At the start, everyone just booked it as always. And we, every, everyone at the start was always, we're saying like, all right, we're going to go chill. We're going to go chill. That always happened. That didn't happen. They just went for it, <laughs> which is what always happens. You can just expect it. And for the most part, the race was kind of the same as Missoula, just gradually making up places. And I was actually by myself for a lot of the race, a ton of climbing. So it's not a huge deal, but not as technical. Same kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. The, the downhill really isn't technical. It's just really fast and flowy from what I yeah. remember. Yeah. It was, it was fast. Like, and just honestly straight down for the most part. Yeah. That's what I remember. And then a, then a sharp 180 degree turn at the, at the bottom of, I think before you go back into a little climb. Yeah. Well, you got fourth there. So that's, that's a good accomplishment in itself. I would say Thanks. I was excited to see that. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And then the the guys in front of me were just miles ahead, <laughs> which is insane. It just shows you like how much of a higher level they're they're at. Bjorn got thirty seconds, or I think it was it was less than a minute behind Blevins for his time, which is just like unreal. It was cool to see. That's crazy, actually, that yeah. he was that close. Yeah, it was insane. And you so know, he's been racing in Europe all year and just been kicking butt and he's like totally in the european racing scene now which is pretty cool to see maybe all his racing in elevation helped him at nats as well maybe yeah for sure yeah he had just been at elevation i think before that race in the world cup yeah i definitely beat a couple of people who usually beat me because i stayed at elevation for a good two and a half weeks which was really beneficial so did you do anything else to prepare for that elevation or were you just two and a half weeks? And how did you do elevation? Were you at, did you go to, you know, a lower and then work your way up or did you just go all the way up? No, I went straight to Winter Park. I uh, stayed with some some of my teammates on the ODA and we just had a little apartment out there and sleeping like seven of us. Okay. And we just, yeah, we were just hanging out in Winter Park. You guys did all your rides there and all your training there you didn't drive down a little bit lower elevation for some yeah no we did we did all our rides there for the most part they're just like super easy i did the bike park one day it just took the lift up so (laughs) that was really fun Uh, especially on the xc bike it's your hands are just so done at the end of the day it's good to have that practice because you can't really get it in here i'm mostly just messed around and, you know, you just got to you gotta rest so that fatigue doesn't set in. Yep. And then just get your lungs up to speed. Yeah, downhill. So I think last year, well, I know last year I did two days of Crested Butte downhill before Nats and then race yeah. Nats. So I know what you're talking about with the hands. Yeah. You know, they were just destroyed by the end of the second day. Yeah. <laughs> And then I think I actually had a headache. I did have a headache the day of because of all the the bumps as well. Oh, yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, lots of breaking bumps out there. Yes, yes. What's been your favorite race that you've done in Michigan so far this year? Hands down Marquette Trails Fest. It was my first time doing that race. And you know, I was actually I was on my way up to coach uh, camp in Houghton. And the the Trails Fest happened to be that weekend, so I stopped in Marquette and went went a day early. And man, I mean that course was unreal. They did such a good job. It was just one big loop, and it had all the best Marquette trails in it. It was like super gnarly and chunky spots, and some good like flowy sections. We did uh, Down Dogger. Oh, nice part of, the, part of the race, yeah. And then we went up from there to Marquette Mountain and did like a good, it was a good like four or five minute downhill, which for Marquette is pretty awesome. That's a lot of down, like descending. Yeah. Maybe Zook's yeah. Trail? Uh, I, I don't know the name of that one. Uh, okay. It was just, uh, I want to go up and find it again after Shaquamagon. I'm 
That's my goal. I'm definitely going back to that one. And I want to ride the route again just because it was so much fun. But, I mean, that was hands down best cross-country race I've probably ever done, in my opinion. Really? Yeah. It was It was just, just such, like, good quality trail. Everything was just thought out amazing. I agree about Marquette Trails. I was just up there for the first time this summer ever. And I was blown away at how technical it is and then how flowy some trails are and they have downhill runs. I just, I couldn't believe that, how, how the, the quality, like you said, it's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. They, and they did a great job. This, the whole vibe at the, at the event was amazing. How long was the race? It was, I think it was only like 16 miles. Okay. But it ended up being like an hour and 20, I think. Because of the technicalness? Yeah. What time of year was that? I don't I don't remember exactly. It was late June, I think. Late late June, okay. Yeah. Highly recommend going there next year. I mean, for the whole thing, it's just a lot of fun. I'll I'll be back if I can go. Heck yeah. Sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's crit racing and downhill and enduro, like all of it. I want to I want to do all of it next year. Were you alone most of that race or were you with a group? I was with Pete like the whole time. We were battling it out. It was really fun to race with him. I've never raced with him before. He's just an amazing rider, super, super strong, and like technical abilities were great. And I was—he was actually another coach for the camp in Houghton. So, oh, we okay, out the whole week. He was like just a really good, like well-rounded athlete. So it was really fun to race with him, and just like shred really good trail. That's cool. We're gonna rewind. Can you tell us how and when you got started on the bike? I mean, I'm basically, I, I've been, I mean, I've loved to ride my bike, like, since as long as I can remember. I think I, like, officially, like, started racing, I think it was Conquer the Village, like, 2013 or 2014. That was, like, our local race at the Commons, and super fun. It used to be my favorite race. It was great. Now, now it's gotten pretty washed out up there, but. Is that yeah. in Traverse City? Yes, it was just oh. it was like a couple blocks away from me. So okay, you know what? Mud, sweat, and beers might have been my first race, and then conquer the village after that. But uh, it was one of the two, and I just kind of started doing them for fun. But really, like cycling was kind of always part of my life because my dad would take me out and just we'd ride together, still ride together all the time. I needed the exercise, needed, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I had a lot of energy. He never forced me to, which I was happy about. Like a lot of, that's one thing. Like I see a lot of a lot of dads doing is they're like super serious and like they force their kid. Like you know, you have to go on this ride. A lot of them like, like never touched a bike again after that. And it's like it's got to be your decision. So he he was always really good about like keeping it up to me, like what I wanted to do and how hard I wanted to push myself. And for the most part, we just go out and have fun on bikes. You know. Yep. That's cool. It's good to have a yeah. have a dad maybe sounds like he guided you and then from there he just kind of let you pick what you wanted to do which I think works yeah. pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I remember my first time hearing your name was at a racing for home race. And okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I had never heard your name before, which was probably crazy cuz I, I you were already fast. And every time, every lap, we were close to each other because I could hear them yelling your name. And I'm like, who is this Cayenne kid? You know, because you, you were still shorter, right? Because now you've grown yeah. to, I don't know how tall you are now, but you were, I, I don't know how old you were, maybe 14, 15. <laughs> it was, okay. <laughs> but it was crazy just to see how fast you were at that age and then where you are now. I mean, I, I couldn't believe that. I don't know, maybe 13, 14, 15 year old was that fast on the bike already. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough race too. I mean, that yeah. one, I think that year, that was definitely the hardest race I, I did. I mean, it was but just brutal. They have it kind of set up like a UCI race where you do more laps, but it's, yeah. it's like nonstop climbing, I think. You're going up or you're going down. Yeah. What recent event did you do? bike race that was challenging and fun at the same time you know i would say the world cup was the most challenging and really fun just like to be there and like the usa vibes were super good everyone was just hyped to be there and like 
I got destroyed in that race. I just didn't show up with <laughs> good power. I don't know why. I mean, I'd raced Nats the week before, but I, I felt pretty recovered. But I, I don't know. I just didn't show up to the line in like super good shape. And it was wet, which is not <laughs> definitely not my strong suit. Michigan trails, if it rains, it's just it's better usually. So I'd never like experienced trying to ride through ruts and stuff and the clay and like I, I had very little experience with that so that was hard but I had a blast and I learned so much and my technical skills got way better just from being there I think I got like high 30s placement wise like I, I did not do well basically all my friends beat me every time I went through the line everyone was just like super hyped just because I was in a USA jersey so it was, it was just cool to see that energy from the crowd it's a cool experience, I'm guessing, to be there as an athlete, but it's just as cool to be there as a spectator. When you see the USA kid, it's <laughs> there's something about it that makes yeah. the fans go crazy. It's really cool. It's definitely I the think, opposite in Europe. <laughs> what's that? The USA kid's a target in Europe, though. It's, what it's do you mean? Opposite. I did a race in Belgium, and I, I ended up winning it. It wasn't a big race. It was kind of like MSB level. It was dead silent at the finish line when I went through. So it was, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, there was no cheering at all. Yeah. The silence meant more to me than cheering though. It was, it was a good feeling. So <laughs> <laughs> you just tell everyone was pretty mad that a USA kid, but it was still pretty crazy over there. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. Cause even, you know, at the world cups or at other races, whoever wins gets, I mean, when you're here, you get cheered on. Yeah. So I'm thinking back to the to your transition from Nats to the World Cup. And I know oh. some people struggle when they come out of elevation for some reason with their body to normalize. Oh. And I don't know if maybe that was part of what was going on with you. You know, you're at nine, ten thousand feet and then you came down to what, four thousand feet? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know, I think that definitely was part of it. It was pretty humid out too so like just makes it harder to breathe and yeah I, I actually did notice like I my lungs didn't feel that good obviously it wasn't the whole part because all my friends who were at Nats beat me yeah but, yeah I mean honestly like just even after being in Europe like I feel like I never got I, I had six races in a period of five weeks so I, I think my like anaerobic system never really got to recover from that yeah just with like always pushing to the max and you know only now actually like in the past two weeks have I started to feel like really good and my lungs like just kind of slow down and like I noticed my breathing is like way slower yeah I think that's definitely part of it did you do any other sports or activities in your past when I was little I did soccer which I really liked and then moved on to track and cross country okay in school I'm an endurance guy. Like I was doing the mile and stuff. After middle school, I I quit doing school sports and just focused on biking. So I'm guessing soccer probably started that endurance up a little bit because it's pretty much a nonstop sport. I mean, you're yeah on that field running almost the whole time, and then you transitioned to cross country, which helped build that engine up a little more. And then yeah, the bike obviously. I'm always curious to see what sports people have done that may have helped them out thinking about maybe the past or even right now what's been the best investment that you made in yourself maybe a parent made in you a family member a friend that's been the most beneficial to you along the way to get you to where you are honestly just probably my parents like <laughs> you know I mean I was lucky my dad was into the same sport so <laughs> he was more willing to you know invest in that and invest in me and like cycling I got my first carbon bike was a 2015 Scott scale and no suspension on it. And he kept it that way for a while. That really helped me like learn how to not be lazy and like choose my lines wisely, or I'm going to have some hand pain at the end of the ride. The other thing I would say is like when I saved up for my first trail bike, actually, I kind of gotten into you know, like jumping and stuff and like more gnarly stuff, which dad definitely wasn't too happy with that decision. <laughs> uh, he didn't 
and he's like, you're never going to use those skills in life, and blah, blah, blah. He was, he was pretty mad that I got the trail bike, but I started doing that stuff, and then probably a year and a half, a little over a year and a half ago, I went to Arkansas and realized I was really glad I got that bike because <laughs> Arkansas is a really gnarly course for my first UCI race, and, you know, all those skills, like, paid off instantly being there. So it was pretty cool. Like, I honestly, I didn't watch any videos of it. I thought it would just be, like, two track or something, like, you know, <laughs> orange clay, like, orange shore or something, you know. I was like, all right, I feel pretty good in my first race out of state, and I get there, and you have to climb a massive rock garden. I still had to learn the course. It took me a couple of weeks, but just that prior experience with hitting jumps and, you know, rock gardens and stuff, that was really good to like have that behind me and i think that course wasn't there like a a gap rock jump or something from what i remember or a drop uh the rock jumps had the gaps like filled in like they actually had like metal plates over them so you couldn't truly case it okay uh, but there the drops though were huge i mean they were they were as tall as me from to the top of the landing so i mean you're jumping further than the top i mean we were good going to good like seven feet down before your wheels hit but uh <laughs> course designers did outstanding job uh the landings were steep so you're not gonna just destroy your bike you know you got a good transition out of it a solid amount of room for mistakes you know um, which is why bentonville is such a good place to learn is you know stuff like wide and built really well so i mean pretty much anything you can expect from a bentonville trail it was just packed into one race. Well, it's a good thing you got that trail bike because yeah. even looking at World Cup races now, if that's the route, I mean, or any XE races, they're all getting more technical at the yeah. elite level. I, I guess another thing would be we had a Norte when they first started doing like after school practice. Our first coach when it was just like 10 of us was Travis Cole. He's since like moved out of Traverse City. He's now kind of near the near the west coast on like all the best all the best trails but he was the first one who like introduced us to that kind of stuff just low level jumps and some rock garden he would take us to the rock gardens at least once a week and all of us had endowed at least once on that thing just but it was good you know he he took us through that stuff and Norte ended up not being happy with him and he was not the coach after that year because Norte didn't think I mean obviously didn't realize like that's part of mountain biking too <laughs> so it was great for all of us to get those skills too from him and that's kind of also what inspired me to get the trail bike so gotta nice. give credit to him too as well there's something about <laughs> challenging yourself that we all need to do and I think that in mountain biking that's part of it and then there's also, as an adult or as an parent, an aspect where you'd want to try to protect your kid from getting hurt mm -hmm. or, or doing something stupid. There's a lot of different ideas on what should be done for even like MISCA racing, right? Yeah. Should we do this technical section or should we keep it out? And mm -hmm. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always like... Let's keep it in because the kids need to learn. And, you know, when we're at practice, yeah. let's session these areas that are harder, you know, yeah, that's good. Yeah. so that we can build skills. We had a race, our last race, and was at a waspy, and there was like a tougher, steep climb after a, a skinny bridge over some water with some mm -hmm. big roots. And I was teaching the kids to get over those roots instead of taking the long beeline around you know yeah. developing being able to go over and get over that so i just i'm always about trying to improve skills and do things that may be a little more risky i think it's good for you yeah that's definitely good there's a fine line of like between actually doing something stupid versus calculating the risk in a smart way the kids need to know their limits and like know how to like actually calculate that risk that's one of the biggest things. You know, some people just will send it off anything. And, it, and you know, <laughs> a lot of them turn out to be really good, but you know, you're going to get injured at the same time. 
Whereas like if you don't try anything new, I mean, you're never going to progress in your skills. So like I think learning to find that in between of like, I know I can do this. I'm going to try it. Like I know I have the skills and I know I can learn it versus like I'm just going to do it. You know, I don't really care if I fall or not. If it's well above, obviously you probably shouldn't try it yet. You need to ramp up to it. But yeah, yeah. Gradual progression is good. I learned the best phrase when I went to Bentonville, speaking of that place again, pre-ride, re-ride, free ride. Yep. Right? That's perfect. Can't emphasize that enough. What has been your most all-time memorable race on the bike? And maybe walk us through that. I would probably say Iceman 2019, I think was the year. Yep. Uh, It was my last year racing juniors. And I'd never won it. I'd never won like the actual full junior thing before. I was just always super stoked for the Iceman just because it's like celebration of biking and, you know, like just celebrating the season and everything kind of coming to an end right there. Already like stoke levels were really high and went off the gate and just kind of ended up battling out and ended up taking the win. It just felt good, you know, to have have trained a fair amount and like for it to pay off at Iceman was just really memorable. And like other stuff, like I actually bit into a shot block in that race and it pulled my tooth out. What? They were still frozen. So just like a lot of like stupid stuff, but just ended up being a really fun race. You bit into a frozen shock, sh- shot block and it broke your tooth out or pulled your tooth out? It pulled it out. Yeah, never eat shot blocks in a cold race. It's a bad <laughs> idea. Or cliff blocks, whatever they're called now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was one of my baby teeth still. But <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was lodged in there pretty good, you know. It took some force to rip it out. I was going for the pass. I, we were on the road. I forget what road it is. It's in, near the start of the race. You're crossing the road and then you take it for like 200 feet and turn back into the two track where the police cars usually are. And I yep. popped a shot block in and just, you know, I bit down on something hard and I was like, the heck? I took it back out and it's my tooth. Oh, oh. So that happened right at the start of the race. Yeah. But I mean, it didn't really affect it. It was just, I just put it in my um, pocket and kept going. How many people can say they lost a tooth and then still finish the race? Who has been your biggest competition along the way throughout the years? And maybe take us through a race where you went head to head. I mean, there's a lot of people for sure who are, I mean, especially in Northern Michigan, just like so fast. Yeah. You know, every race, it's usually a different person, but Garrett Jenna was really strong. He, he and I are usually like really, really close. He beat me couple times in uh, mud, sweat, and beers in a lot of races, actually, not just that. But I I guess I'd probably say Garrett or Jordan Wakeley. Both of those two are just amazing, amazing riders. It's really, really strong. And they're just, like, great overall people, too. A lot of fun to race with. Yeah, and so you just battle back and yeah. forth. Yeah. And the outcome's always different, especially as you and Garrett are getting older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It keeps switching to, around. It's yeah. <laughs> we're we're all just like really close, so it's it's really fun, especially to race with them. Just you know, whoever's having a good day. <laughs> yep, I think I remember. It just used to always be Wakely, and then you guys like right there, right there, and then now it's it's switching around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> any given day, don't know who's gonna win. Why do you love the bike and the sport, and what keeps you going? It does a lot for mental health, for sure. That's probably probably the biggest reason, honestly, is just like mental health wise. It just like takes all the stress away from me, helps me focus off the bike. So it's like, I don't know, my mind's kind of, I've got ADD. So like my mind's always kind of going like a million miles an hour. So just kind of speeding up kind of slows down my brain, if that makes sense. You know, just kind of letting everything go and I'd, I'd say mental health. Do you do any strength training in your routine or incorporate anything into your training? Yes, I do. I mean, my like official strength training block is in the winter, like the endurance season when I'm not racing. And usually it's like probably a little over three hours 
a week. So I'll do like usually three days a week and then two of them being like pretty difficult. That's you said more during like the base building off type season. Yeah. Yeah. So that's always an endurance. And then kind of it just like after that, basically, I'm just like keeping like focused on keeping the strength there. So I'll do like usually only one a week, actually, just like small 45 minute strength session. Okay. But honestly, I, I, I need to do more strength wise because just like if I want to really focus on World Cups, like you just need so much more upper body for that stuff. And really, that, that's definitely something I need to work on. And squats too, just like, you know, in most races, it's endurance matters like a lot. But in the World Cups, it's just on off, on off, on off, like as hard as you can go. It's just so intense. And what, I mean, when you're not just destroying yourself, you're going down the gnarliest rock garden, <laughs> scared out of your mind. So <laughs> it's pretty intense. I, I just need, I definitely want to like focus more on getting better at that sharp power stuff next year. Yeah, you definitely see it in the races. Punchy climbs, all all out, gassed out. And then, yeah, you've got to descend this technical, very technical terrain. So, yeah. I mean, I've heard from some other athletes that are racing at that level that, you know, they'll the squats, like you said, mm -hmm. and then they'll do intervals up a mountain and then make sure that on the recovery – they're going down very technical terrain, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it keeps your heart rate up too. Like, I mean, it's not like, it's not easy to like really be like efficient on the downhills and like having to focus for one thing and also just like pump into stuff and, you know, absorb the rock gardens and your body, especially on the super cal <laughs> when right. you don't have much travel, but it's, it's, it's crazy. So then you don't do strength training during the race season. Is that correct? No, I'm not like, I'm not trying to build muscle. Like you're doing a lot of endurance and base in the winter and then more endurance in the spring and like taper off the strength. And so that like bulk weight you build kind of goes away and the strength like stays there. That's what the theory is. So do you spend most of your training time indoor or outdoor and what bike sees the most training action? Definitely outdoor. You know, I, I like the trainer, but sometimes I just can't stand it at the same time. <laughs> so even in the winter, I try to get out as much as possible, even though most like intervals are on the trainer, just because you have like a lot of good data on there. Yep. Winter, the fat bike gets a solid amount of use. Last year with kind of our mild winter, I actually did get out on the XC bike a good amount too, just because the trails get packed down by walkers downtown and those are just kind of fun to rip around on spring a lot of mountain bikes summer a good amount of road probably equal amount of mountain and road I, I just got a, a road bike this year and just absolutely love it that's i've cool. been doing a lot of road i think road helps for sure yeah just the consistency is like really nice to have yep what types of devices or supplements do you use to help you recover after hard workouts and races? I have a Hypervolt. I use a solid amount. It definitely helps, you know, to like massage the legs. Actually, a local guy in town uh, has just started this company. It's called Flexit. And it's basically like an off-brand of AMP. And I just started using that stuff earlier this summer. And I really like it. It's just four ingredients, I think. Basically like a normal kind of base alcohol that you would use in like any sort of lotion. And then he dissolved like the Epsom salts into that. Because like, I know a lot of a lot of athletes take Epsom salt baths to help with their recovery. But this stuff actually absorbs into your legs better. It's definitely like nice to use that. Like I definitely feel a difference when I'm using that. But for the most part, I really just like use the standard stuff, you know, put the legs up against the wall. Legs up against the wall and let gravity do the work for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely a big help. So It is. What's your favorite interval workout to do on the bike? Do you like shorter intervals or do you like longer intervals? I'm kind of a short interval guy. As much as I'm bad at that stuff, 
I really like it. You know, I feel like it just goes by faster. And yep. My coach really likes me to do them on the road, which I do most of the time. But, like, I find when I have a really, like, short and punchy, like, hill, like an actual hill, it's easier to just, like, go really deep and uh, push yourself to the limit and black out. So it's just easier <laughs> on a hill, I think. So I would probably say, like, the hill repeats workouts, like, however long that is, like, anywhere from two minutes to 15 seconds, it's just, like, good to do on a hill. Yep. I like those as well, actually. If there was one race you could do over, what would it be and what would you have changed? You know, this year, it would be the Czech Bike Cup, probably. Um, it was in the Czech Republic. I didn't know what I was going into. I was kind of trying to save my legs for the Swiss Bike Cup the week afterwards. And it ended up being like a super cool race at a ski resort. Just like straight up and down. I don't know, like a lot of climbing and it would have been like a really good race for me to do well in. And it was UCI. So it was, it was pretty big, but I felt like I could have done really well if I would have just saved my legs for that. But I really went into it with just garbage legs and I've been training a fair amount, not training, but just like riding a fair amount the week before If we go back there next year. then I definitely want to, like really shoot for that race to do well in because the Swiss bike cup I had legs for, but uh, I got taken out at the start by another dude. So it's pretty, yeah, pretty crazy. That's bike racing sometimes, right? Yep. Smashing bars. Yeah. (laughs) Smashing bars. I've seen that happen at Iceman smashing bars. Yeah. So you would have gone back if you could have went back and you would have just maybe prepared a little better, stayed off the bike, maybe a little bit more for a taper and head fresher legs. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. If you could spend one week training with another athlete, who would it be and why? I would have to say one of my teammates, Jack Springer. He's just absolutely insane on the downhills. I mean, he wins like enduro races on his XC bike. Like that's how good a descender he is. Okay. And just to be able to follow him, like in Bellingham this year, I got to follow a lot of my teammates, probably all of my teammates, I guess I would, I would choose uh, on Bear, just because they're like such good descenders. Being able to ride with them for four or five days in Bellingham was just like, I noticed the difference instantly coming back here. Huh. That was probably the biggest thing ever for my technical skills, just being able to ride those trails and like ride behind them too was just a huge confidence boost and skills boost. So yeah, I'd probably say Jack and any other of my teammates. Do you think that they're really good at descending? Are they based? I mean, did they grow up in the mountains? Do you think that's why? Yeah, most of them are. A lot of them are from Durango. Uh, okay. Jack's from Washington. So I mean, they're all basically doing mountains all the time. I mean, it's just part of their lives you know yeah and we don't have that yeah (laughs) they have all the tech they can imagine so it's pretty pretty cool so i I definitely want to spend some time in marquette next spring or something just to get my tech skills to another level heck yeah i think that's definitely a good place to go because there are some trails there that are super techy yeah what do you do pre-competition to get yourself ready for the race, do you do any music, ru- uh, rituals, or routines? Pre-race, you know, I, I try to just do the exact same thing every time. Kind of harder for the afternoon stuff. You know, eat like three and a half hours before, like a good amount until you're like just full. That's always oatmeal with <sighs> applesauce in it and maple syrup. I really like that for my race breakfast. And then as far as warm-up goes, I think honestly the longer the better is good for me. Usually that's like 30 minutes, I would say, to um, maybe even 40 with a couple little sprints in there. So you're another person that can do the oatmeal, which is, which I'm jealous of because for some reason my system does not like oatmeal and I just get stuck. It just seems like such a good pre-race fuel because it, you know, I think it takes a little longer for it to break down. And your body yeah. can use it longer as as opposed to like something that just goes away so fast. 
Yeah, I think rice is a really good one too. Yeah. No, I usually do like rice or a pasta the night before for dinner. Yeah. So that works for me. I've always wanted the oatmeal and every time I try it, I just did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say even like the meal the night before is more important than breakfast the day of. I agree. What events are on your calendar for the rest of this year? And maybe explain a little bit about what they are and where they are. Shaquamagon is next on the list, leaving in a couple of days. Uh, that's in Cable, Wisconsin. I've never done it before. And it's kind of a longer race. And like the winning time last year was two hours and 15 minutes. So pretty crazy, but it'll be good. I'm, I'm excited for that. It is a point to point with just kind of a lot of like, it's a lot like Iceman, I think. Just like gravel roads, like really chunky gravel is what I've heard. So that'll be a good experience. I think after that is just peak to peak and Iceman. So peak to peak is at Crystal Mountain in Michigan and Iceman is up in Traverse City in Michigan, which goes yeah. from Kalkaska to Traverse City. Yeah. And, and that's the big party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've had two other people. Cole Patton's going to be back at that Wisconsin race. Uh -huh. And so is Dylan Johnson. Yeah. Did you listen to the Dylan Johnson podcast? No, not the, not any of the recent ones. No. So uh, he, he was just on mine last week. Oh, sweet. And he talked about the race and what he's going to do. I think he's going to show up with his mountain bike and drop bars. Wow. <laughs> That's so, pretty crazy. And he goes into why he's thinking that. He, because the race is so fast, right? It's like Iceman, yeah. like you said, high speed. Cool. He, he put it into some calculator that he uses to do wind resistance at different speeds yeah. and the bars you choose can make a huge difference over the course of the 40 mile race. Right. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe go back and listen to him in the last, in last week's episode and see what he says. And I don't know. Yeah. That'll be cool to hear for sure. I'm showing up with my full suspension and my dropper post. So <laughs> not, <laughs> definitely not fully prepared for this. But That's I okay. think, uh, yeah, my strategy is just going to be standing in the draft, I think. you know. Yeah, I think part. that's a good strategy right there. <laughs> Thanks. Can you lock that shock out on the track, the back? Yes, I can lock both out, yep. Oh, you can? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But the thing is, like, with that bike, like, it's so efficient that, and I'm not one of those guys who, like, says every bike's efficient, like the pink bike reviews. <laughs> like I'm an actual XC rider who loves his lockout more than anyone. But I can say with that bike, like it's so efficient that I will keep it unlocked most of the time. Really? Like, yeah. And it's, if you get it like really dialed, it's just amazing for the Midwest. Interesting. Cause I'm, I'm just like you. I have to have a lockout on my full suspension because yeah. if I'm going up a hill and it's not technical, I want the shocks locked. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that the bike, that bike did that. Yeah, it's a right. great. I mean, I would say for the Midwest, it's probably the fastest bike I can think of for most of the races. I mean, Iceman, you want a hardtail. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. I mean, a lot of them hardtail, but if you're not going to use a hardtail, like I would 100% choose the Super Caliber. I've always been curious about that bike, and I've wanted to ride one, but I don't know. If that you're in TC, ever. let me know. You can try mine out. <laughs> yeah, but you're a giant compared to me. I, I ride an XL, so that might be a problem. Yeah. I have a dropper post. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, then that we could. Yeah, that would work. Another question, and this might be a dead end. What's okay. going on October 15th in Traverse City this year? Moment Bike Fest is it one thing. Oh, 15th. I'm actually looking at the flyer right now. It says the 9th. October 9th? Um, yeah, 8th and 9th. So the Bike Fest is another race I'm doing this year. It is going to be like Michigan's first, lower Michigan's first real like tacky mountain bike race, like UCI style. Something you'd find in Wisconsin or anywhere else usually, but that we haven't really had here in a long, long time. That's going to be really cool. It's going to be like lap UCI, AB line style, cross-country mountain bike racing. So 
I'm really excited for that. So that is October 8th and 9th. I think that one's on the 8th, and then uh, Belgium Waffles on the 9th. Oh, okay. And what's the name of that event again? It's called the Black Chili XC. Okay. So I would love for as many downstaters to come do that race as possible because up here I don't think there's many people who are willing to go down rock anything that's not dirt. There will be like some, I mean, it's not going to be anything like an actual UCI race, but it will have some really good rock gardens and some solid drops. Everything will be have ride arounds, obviously, but nothing you guys downstate can't handle. So <laughs> I'd love to see some people hitting that stuff in the race. Heck yeah. So put that on your calendars, everybody. That's coming right up here, October 8th and 9th. And the 8th is the one you want to do, and the ninth is the Belgian Waffle Race, right? Yep. What trail would you recommend as a must-ride in the northern part of Michigan, not in the UP? You know, we have so many good ones. Palmer Woods is really good right now. They just redid it. It's not, not anything like it was when it first started out. So the jumps are like actually for the speed of the trail. <laughs> okay. Which is nice. And where's uh, Palmer Woods? Uh, Palmer Woods is in Leelanau County. So about a 30 minute drive from where I'm at. Definitely worth it for a couple hours of riding. There's actually who builds DTE again? It was a spectrum. I think it was I'm spectrum. not hundred percent sure. Well one of those guys did it and it's actually like really good. I mean the the problem with it in the first place, Palmer when it started, it was just, it wasn't built sustainably. So like the berms were just kind of, I mean, they were good, but they weren't like built to be able to hold up. So, you know, a couple months into the year and everything just turned to sand and garbage. So they imported clay now and it's like really built to last a long time. Obviously like just the quality of the features and like everything like flows with the speed of the trail. It's just, it's really good now. I just so, put it on my list of places to go. Definitely. <laughs> let me know when you come. I'd love to ride with you. Okay. So I will definitely you. let you know when I'm up there to do that. Awesome. Is that an XC bike then, or should I bring my more enduro bike? It is cross country for sure. Okay. Uh, everything. I mean, they're, they are like solid size jumps, but an XC bike is the best place. There's no bumps. It's just pure flow. There's some good features and stuff, but it's great to just have an XC bike and be able to go straight up the hill, and it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, way more fun. If you were to give advice to younger athletes that look up to you, what would that advice be? Biggest thing would just be keep having fun with it. That's one thing Like a lot of people get really focused on training. Results are good to get. Like It's a good goal to have results in races but mix it up as much as possible ride with your friends and just like push each other to get better try new things and just have fun with it that seems to be like the biggest piece of advice that most give and i have to agree you gotta have fun absolutely it's just i mean when you're not having fun you really can't push yourself as hard either right that little bit of extra adrenaline is just good to have you know i agree this is good advice too if you are stuck inside and you're on the trainer, uh -huh. if I watch something that's just kind of blah, blah, that's kind of how my ride goes. Uh -huh. So for me, what gets me really excited is watching old stuff of Michael Jordan or watching Formula One racing. Oh, and I just sweet. get like a lot of energy and I'm able to do a really good workout with that on. That keeps it fun indoor for me and keeps my energy level high. That's awesome. That's good advice. Anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? Hope to see everybody at Iceman and Moment and Peak to Peak. So it's going to be a really good fall season. I'm stoked. Heck yeah. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you on social media? You can find me on Instagram at capital MTB underscore and then Kyan, K-Y-A-N. Yeah, Instagram is like a good place for sure. Cool. So find Kyan on Instagram. Yeah. And if I don't respond, just keep spamming me. It's not you. <laughs> just keep spamming me. Did you say like yeah. me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Nice. <laughs> Kyan, I've enjoyed watching you grow as an athlete, and I love watching you continue to push the envelope and achieve new highs. I'm going to continue to follow you in your career, and I look forward to seeing what unfolds. I appreciate you taking the time to come on today and have this enjoyable discussion. Oh, thanks. My pleasure. It's great to talk with you, Rob. Absolutely. We'll hopefully see you soon. Sounds good. Let me know when you want to ride anytime. I'm down. You have just listened to Unpacking the Athlete.